I would like to welcome you to Coriel Park, a beautiful park located between Auburn and Brock, Nebraska. It was in 1867 that Mr. and Mrs. Richard Coriel, along with their son George, traveled to Nebraska from Wisconsin and made their home right here on this ground, which is now known as Coriel Park. The wagon box was their home. They lived there until they were able to build a house. And this house eventually became home to two of the Coriel children, L.L. Sr. and Nettie. After the Coriels had died and all, the family made improvements and made considerable monies and they wanted to honor their parents. And so in 1934, they built this park that would be open to the public and free to the public in honor of Mr. and Mrs. Richard Coriel. This beautiful park contains the Coriel Treasure House and the mausoleum and the bridal home of L.L. Coriel Sr. and what they called the auditorium. I'm standing near the chapel. On August 30th, 1936, this place of prayer and worship honored the 100th birthday anniversary of Richard Coriel. It was the idea of the family that this chapel would last for the ages. Richard had a strong commitment to Christ. And though he worked the land around this park area, six days a week. Sunday found him in worship, where he often was the preacher. He loved his Lord. In January 1868, he was preaching a message in a little area that's called Clifton. And there is a cemetery adjacent to this park that was part of the Clifton community. And two people came forward following his message, and they confessed their faith in Christ and were baptized. When I read of the construction of this chapel and of Richard's life, I can't help ask a question that was asked of me when I was a young man, on which foundation are you building? I've never forgotten that question. And I'm asking you, will your foundation last? Will it stand the test of time? Will it stand coronavirus, terrorism, cancer, financial challenges? This beautiful stone chapel has a front wall that's 28 inches thick, think of it. And the side walls are 24 inches thick with the outer portion of the walls being built of cobblestone that were picked up from this farm area. The cut stone is from Bedford, Indiana. It's a beautiful limestone. It's the same kind of limestone that builds that built Nebraska's beautiful state capital. What's been impressive to me is the foundation of this chapel. It is five and one half feet deep. The roof is of slate. It came from the state of Maine. And the seats within the chapel were made out of fly, five ply oak from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And the windows were designed by the Lincoln Art Glass Company. There's a beautiful window called Suffer the Little Children to Come Unto Me. And the picture of Lorraine Coriel was the model for this beautiful portrait. When this chapel was built, a lady by the name of Flora Bullock wrote a beautiful poem that I want to read for you and with you today. The little chapel on the hill amid the prairie sod, 
Through all the year in sun and shade sings love and praise to God. Here soft winds play his symphonies throughout the starlit night and waking birds chant hymns of joy to greet the morning light. The springtime flowers that gaily bloom, the cornfields myriad spires, and winter hills in shining white sing with the chapel choirs. All beauty is God's hidden thought, whose melody we tell in loveliness of stone and wood, though silent hangs the bell. On hallowed place of memories, where pioneers have trod, we join their voices singing still in love and praise to God. What has been inspiring to me and challenging for me are the words that were scribed that described Richard's faith. In the book R.C. Barrow, His Life and Work, he writes about this man who farmed this land and preached the word of God. He wrote, he is poor in the things of this world and usually labors six days of the week to support himself and family, but is always ready to lay aside the implements of manual labor and take up the sword of the spirit, which he has learned to wield with great power. We have few men among us who have made a better use of the talents committed to their keeping. He has been bitterly persecuted, but labors on with increasing zeal and tireless perseverance. When the master calls him from labor to rest, he will be found ready, and many he has directed to the Lamb of God will bless his memory. What a testimony. It's a marvelous testimony of someone whose foundation faith was in Jesus Christ and was without question. What is your legacy of faith? As I stated earlier, on which foundation are you building? One might wonder why Richard's family erected a chapel footings five and a half feet deep. Their reasoning in anything that I've read is they wanted this chapel to last. Likewise, Richard's faith in Jesus Christ, he knew, would last. It was on Christ, the solid rock, he stood. How about you? Do you have a firm foundation that will last forever? If not, begin today to build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this place of peace and rest. But most of all, we thank you for the faith of this pioneer family who because of their love of you brought many to come to, be, to faith in you. And this chapel is in their honor because they were committed to you, Father. And I pray that each of us will so build our lives on the Lord Jesus Christ that our legacy will continue and last as we await your coming for us. In Christ's name, amen.